We just got back from the coast. Ooh, where'd you so, go? Uh, we were in Morro Bay with some friends. Mm-hmm. Kids had a blast boogie boarding and hanging out at the beach and building sandcastles. Did you wear your water socks? I wish I still had water socks. <laughs> it's like, hello, 1988. <laughs> yes. God, I forgot those even existed. Mm-hmm. No, I um, I had Nike water socks. Ooh, kind of, okay. If I remember, they were like chartreuse or some 80s color like that, you know. Did you ever have um, Tevas? Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. I never wore them with socks, though. How about you? Actually, it's funny. When Cookie and I first met and I was in college, um, I would rock white so- ankle socks with my Tevas. Nice. And after like our third date, she just pointed at my feet and said, that's a non-starter. You need yeah, this has got to in this <laughs> right now. <laughs> Welcome back to the Financial Insights Podcast and the Casual Friday Webcast. I imagine this is the only webcast slash podcast that has two different names. You'd think if we were better at marketing, it would be the same across both. <laughs> But it's not. And the laughing at me that you hear in the background, if you're listening to this on the podcast, is Joe Perry, our mor- mortgage ninja. Would you describe yourself? Wait, as that? You roll with that. Yeah, yeah. We roll with that. our mortgage ninja. Um, if Joe has made miracles happen for more than one of our clients and probably even more than one of our advisors here in the office. And so... If you had listened to the webcast or watched the webcast, listened to the podcast before, you will know that Joe has is is a guest, a frequent guest, infrequent. You're uh, Joe. You join us. You're the you're the most frequent non advisor guest. I dig it, man. I, I, I'll actually put that on my resume. You should right there, right mm-hmm. on LinkedIn. Stick it there. Yep. Let everybody know that um, as a mortgage ninja. Uh, you are our guy. And so I appreciate you. Ryan is in, <clears throat> I'll just say he's in Timbuktu right now. He is not going to be on this webcast anytime soon. And so when he's back from vacation, he may join us. So you're filling in for him. So we appreciate you. Uh, anytime, man. Some time out Always of a highlight. Well, <clears throat> it's a highlight for us too, because everyone, you have a very unique um, expertise. And it's that you help people finance their purchases of real estate, I think. Is that in a sentence? Yeah. Kind of what you do? Everybody. And it, whether you're doing exchanges or multifamily units or <clears throat> investment properties or primary residences or vacation homes, whatever it is, boy, you see it all. And so you have this interesting pulse on what's not just not just what's going on in real estate. These realtors also know that information, but you also understand what's going on the financing side of real estate, which can sure. be, um, which is just as important as, you know, the home buying price, the home buying process that everybody just sees on HGTV. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess we can kind of start. We So you kind of know the drill here. We usually start with kind of a market update. We'll talk, we'll start with housing market update and we'll go through a couple of charts. Um Maybe the a mortgage rate update would be a good place for us to kind of jump in and begin. Um, this is the the chart that we've got here is the thirty year fixed uh, rate mortgage from Freddie Mac. I think this is a few days old, but essentially has a some hovering around seven, just under seven percent for a thirty year mortgage. Is as you look at this with your expertise, Joe, you, you think that's about right? Oh, it's spot on. Yep, it's a. Uh, anyway. When families ask like how my day is, I say, I feel like I'm a strapped into a roller coaster that I, I didn't quite agree to, but I'm along for the ride. And that yeah. this graph is a perfect representation of it. Well, well, it is a roller coaster. We've been north, we were north of seven percent last fall mm-hmm. and then came back down closer to six, but back up to seven. Um, I know what the Federal Reserve does with their interest rates doesn't directly necessarily influence mortgage rates, but it probably kind of sets the tone a bit are you rates have obviously been rising and you've been seeing that um what's your feel on where rates are and how they'll continue uh you know it's uh, it's a, well that's a, a great question and if um families ask if i have a crystal ball and i always refer to like these kind of charts or bond trading charts as a snow globe 
Yeah. I, can, I think I can get close enough. That's um, better, but but yeah. over the last three weeks, things have been pretty violent in terms of interest rates. Like there'll be a swing of a half percent within, you know, three business days or to the point, like if I'm locking an interest rate and my, my cursor is just hovering over the lock key and I'm make, making a note and I got to move my cursor just an inch, like rates can change me moving my cursor that quickly. It's, I haven't seen that kind of activity since back in 2008. Boy, and, and when we say the words 2008, immediately it's, you know, PTSD fears, right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I know as I talk to people and I say, well, a recession could be on the horizon in the next 12 months. Boy, they immediate, they don't think like the recession that we had in 1991 or the early 90s, they think 08 catastrophe. Um, this sure, doesn't have the feel of 08 catastrophe, would you say? No, no, no. And that's, it's a... Uh, and- Families ask, like, shoot, it's already happened a couple times. They, Joe, is now the right time to buy a house? Absolutely, it's the right time to buy a house. You know, the mortgage is not meant to be in this type of a climate a permanent solution. Right. Um, it's just, it's a focus in on the monthly payment. Does that work for the family's budget? And if and when things go down, things will just get better. And so I make the decision based on that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you were even talking about there were some other tools that you've been using. Was it like, it's not three, two, one, but it was kind of like this ascending mortgage. Like a temporary buy down. Yep. There you go. Mm-hmm. Have you been doing more of those? You know, I haven't. It get, it's really expensive um, in order to do it. And if rates, you know, it's it's all up in the air when rates might go down. Right. But let's just say it's two years rates go down. Yeah. Um, on those three, two, one buy downs, if you refinance during that lower rate term, you could leave a bunch of money on the table. So oh. it typically works out better to like, you know, have credits cover closing expenses or reduce the purchase price rather than do some temporary deal. Sure. Sure. Um, has, have you seen, um, well, we can kind of switch to this other stream here. Have you seen activity pick up? Um, because I don't know if this is going to show up because it's pretty. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. Eh, that's a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, home sold. This isn't home. This is this is Redfin here. The Redfin research that we're looking at. Home sold down twenty five percent year over year in Fresno. Um, that 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 seems right, but it also I can say anecdotally it feels like things are starting to maybe pick up. Is that what you're seeing? Are people finally just getting over the rates and getting into it? Uh, it, you know, it's, it's several different things. And I guess one of the examples would be there's a house, I don't know, seven doors down from where me and cookie live. And, um, I drove by it on Thursday last week and I'm like, huh, there's a for sale sign. So as I'm driving, I, um, I call cookie and I say, Hey, there's this address, look it up real quick and see how much they're selling it for. And it already had a sale pending notation on the listing i'm like that's bananas the sign has existed for an hour yes yes well so it's interesting the sale prices are pretty close to where they were last year here according to redfin meaning sale price down two percent about two and a half percent year over year number of homes sold is way down but the median days on the market is like nothing as you were just describing yeah. right it's if you a, give it all the back it's just low low i think we've talked about this before but it's also the the days on the market is is based also on the severe inventory crunch. Yes. Like they're just, it's, I think I was asking someone the other day and they said there was like a 40 day supply of homes in Fresno County. Yes. Which is, which is nothing. Yeah. You know, I lost it on here. Um, I had, I, I did have inventory and it was like as low as it's ever been, but I guess the days on the market, it's, Without having that exact chart here, you can kind of see it just reading reading the tea leaves here. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing for sale. There's nothing mm-hmm. for sale. And so, if um, I guess maybe some of it, it, it's not so much that people are worried about buying houses because of the mortgage rates. It's because people aren't selling their houses because of the mortgage rates. Absolutely. Or they've you know refinanced in 2020, 2021, and they've got a two point three point whatever percent interest rate. And, you know, then, you know, somebody in my position says, you know, rates are high sixes, sevens, and they're like, I'm just going to remodel and, 
you know, we'll figure out how to cram more people into our little house. Right. Right. And you had cited that last time we talked that you mm -hmm. were predicting that, you know, the, the demand for contractors and all of that stuff was going to go up as people kind of had these golden handcuffs of the best mortgage rate of their lifetime, um, keeping them at their homes and not moving mm -hmm. around. Yep. Um, people, are you seeing people move? I can, I've got a little chart here that show, I thought this was really interesting. Um, this is a, a Redfin chart showing where people are relocating to and from, from Fresno. Now this is local mm -hmm. to us. Um, I don't, I haven't heard of a lot of people moving to San Luis Obispo, which is what this chart suggests. Um, there's a couple, there, yeah, there is a couple families. So it's funny, this chart that we're looking at showing all of the states that people are moving to. I have my licenses in all of these states, say for Georgia. Oh, um, is that right? Specifically. So I think I have my licenses in 14 states. Oh my goodness. Just because of the chart that we're looking at and, you know, families asking me to get licensed, you know, in Tennessee or Indiana or Florida or Alabama. Yep. Um, so yeah, people moving out of state is a normal part of my daily routine now. Yeah. And so this is, this chart says that this migration analysis is based on a sample of about 2 million users who, who search for homes across metro areas. And so this isn't because I can say anecdotally, and you mentioned Tennessee, well, I mean, even though Tennessee is represented on here by a dot, I, Texas and Tennessee are who I, it used to be Oregon and Idaho, but now it's mm -hmm. Texas and Tennessee. I see the most. Is that what you're seeing as well? Uh, you know, I've done more deals in Alabama in the last four months than I've done in 20 something years. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing is, you know, when I have, you know, people will say, Oh, Joe, the purchase price is um, 400,000. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's kind of a three bedroom, two bath, normal, nice, but nothing great house. And then I, get the, appraisal. Yeah, then I get the appraisal report. I'm like, Holy mackerel, it's got a helicopter pad. <laughs> So yeah, your dollar goes a lot farther. No time. doubt. No mm -hmm. doubt. Yeah. I had, I had some clients who moved there, moved to Alabama. I've got some in Arkansas also kind of reticent about the move, but one was moved, both of them actually ended up moving for work. Once they got there, they really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I've talked to them since they've had to have a, some, a hot muggy summer there. Right. Um, but you know, that's like me going to Morro Bay for this last weekend. They, you know, they head to the Gulf and go jump in the ocean. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it still works. I have the opposite here. This is a Fresno migration and relocation trend of people who are moving, um, to Fresno from other places. And I don't know if this is a big surprise to you, but it's all coming from the state people moving from more expensive places in California to Fresno. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we're yep. having that Alabama effect. Yep. Cost of living, you know, people sell their, um, I have a, there's a family that just sold a 1100 square foot home in, uh, Santa Clara for a million seven. And they're just going to buy a house for cash here and then park a bunch of money in the bank. And that's all she wrote, which, yep. you know, a, a million seven in Fresno is quite the house. It is. It is. I, you know, and it's not even has to be million dollar homes. The, the first home that I bought, I bought, it was a, a foreclosure February, 2009. So I like to say Ooh. I actually hit the absolute low of the market. Um, when I sold it a few years later to move, uh, someone was moving up from Los Angeles and they paid cash. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, it, it was the same size house, except they were just going to pay for it outright in, right. in that move. So um, kind of interesting, interesting to see, you know, where people are headed, where people are coming from. I don't, I don't, I don't encounter a whole lot of people coming to Fresno. I've got to say, you know, well, certainly it, I would certainly don't think a thousand people are coming from San Francisco to Fresno. That seems like a reach. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, well, cool. Well, so these, I, I, I think these have been some interesting charts. I don't know how the, the migration and relocation trends are hard to say, but I think, um, as we go back to the first chart, I mean the 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 qual on the on the volume of homes being bought and sold are are pretty obviously it's a supply issue that's being mm -hmm. driven by these low rates with people locked in, and then going back seven percent is as as high as we've been in a while. I you know we hear stories. 
I mean, you and I were not old enough to buy a house, but you know, early eighties mortgage rates into the teens. Mm -hmm. um, you don't think we're headed back there, do you? No, no. I mean, I think, and you're, you have a lot more color commentary you could add. And I think we've talked about this maybe once or twice before, but the volume of um, revolve or household revolving debt yeah. right now is the highest it's ever been. And with, you know, uh, upcoming hikes in the feds rates and you know, families getting squeezed more and more and more, um, you know, an example would be one of the neighbors I was talking to, they just came back from four days in Disneyland. I'm like, wow, did you guys have fun? And you felt like you melted your visa card. And he's like, you know, I have my credit card bill still in the envelope and I'm just not going to look at it for a while because we're yeah. trying to figure it out. And I think that's indicative of, you know, the country at large. I don't. Yeah. You yeah. can't keep raising it because you also can't bankrupt your populace. Yeah, you're gonna something's gonna break, and I think we've probably even gotten to the place where something's gonna break. I'm not saying we're gonna have a 2008 all over again, but if you look back, it takes a couple of years for rate hikes to actually find their way into the economy and cause a recession. Rates started going up in 06, and it wasn't even until 08 that things got really, really dicey. Um, so I think you're, you're absolutely right. And then, you know, the inflation has been a mix of some things of prices getting higher, like eggs. There weren't enough eggs, so egg prices went higher. But there's also some element of some, I think there are some businesses that were just saying, okay, well, everybody's raising prices. We've got cover to raise our prices and expand our margins, and we're going to just take it as far as we can. And in the case of like this Disneyland trip, um, he, the, your client could probably have taken a look and gone to Hawaii for a week on, for the same price that they went to Disneyland for three or four days. For sure. Yep. It, but we're going to reach the point where people are just going to say enough is enough. Um, and they'll say, I'm not going, not that this was our equation. We had fun in Morro Bay, but they're saying, I'm not going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to drive two hours to the coast and that's going to be our vacation. And we're already seeing it where, you know, people are cutting back and if they're shopping one, you know, places like big box stores, whether it's Walmart or Costco, right. There's, there's a push for that kind of um, efficiency and inflation fighting in our pocketbooks. And it's just going to keep going. It just hasn't happened with businesses yet because everybody's afraid to lay anyone off. Mm -hmm. After COVID, you lay, you lay a bunch of people off, can't get them back, and it's more expensive to replace them. So businesses are going to keep getting squeezed and small businesses will keep getting squeezed and keep cutting until it's time to let that person that you just hired a year ago go. And this right. people that have been job hopping for the last 12 months will be the last, the last ones in will be the first ones out. And, mm -hmm. But even if we have an unemployment rate that doubles, we're, what, we're going to go from three to 6%. There are points in our history that was considered full employment. Right. So again, not, you say the word recession and everybody thinks 2008 and that was a catastrophe. And that's not, I think what we're looking at here. We can both agree. Agreed. Um, okay. So that's kind of the state of real estate. Tell me, Joe, what's on your mind? Last last week, Ryan was talking about a restaurant that he likes size on here in town, which is a great restaurant. I'm sure you've been to already. I, I, I loved your guys' last podcast. Um, and, and hearing the banter back and forth, as you know, Cookie and I are huge foodies. And we're always looking for the hole in the wall places. Um, so I did hear you guys talk about that. Okay. It's, yeah, I wouldn't describe Saison as hole in the wall, but it is. Have you been to Saison? I've been twice, and I kind of chuckled to myself as I was listening to you guys because I think the ambience is cool. Yes. But I'm not going back. I thought yeah. the food, I would give like probably a six. Oh, okay. I felt, I told, like my legs were stuck under the table just the way that they've laid things out, and I couldn't move for three hours. Oh, yeah. It was, it it was a long dinner. Yeah, and I don't know for you guys, but it was so loud. I couldn't even hear the people that we were having dinner with. So I was outside on the patio. Yeah. Was, I did not have the echo problem. And we went back again because I was like, you know, we have to give it a fair shake. You know, yeah, there's yeah. always working out the kinks. And the next time that we were back, I was actually like this at the table to my buddy trying to hear what he was saying. And I was like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not a young whippersnapper anymore. I like a nice quiet dinner. Well, I can appreciate a quiet dinner. Yes, I'm. I can feel my age when I get in. Whenever I show up somewhere and a band's playing on a Thursday night, I'm like, nope, let's go <laughs> yeah. next door. I, I can I gotta hear myself think, you know. Um, so what what are you thinking about uh, this week? 
Ooh, I mean, if we can stick stick on the um, the restaurant topic for two seconds, sure. And, uh, Trellio in Old Town Clovis is ah, been, yes. yeah, that's been one of Cookie and my favorite restaurants probably in the on the planet for um, forever. In fact, the quick story on it is in college. So I went to Fresno State, and I would tutor calculus in the engineering department, and I had no money. I was super broke but I would save up my math tutoring money to take Cookie on dates. And the oh, first cool. nice restaurant that I ever took her to with my tutoring money was Trellio. And that table that we had our first date at in the year 2000, it's still there. Nice. Um, so those those people, Chris and all of them, they're, they're like family to us at this point. Yes, yes. Yeah. Whenever I see them out, I always say, oh, you know, you must, you know, Joe, I know Joe, we all know Joe. And they're like, oh yeah, Joe's the best. Yes. Um, but that's a cool story. I didn't know the, I didn't know the history there for, for you guys personally. I mean, I know you, it's a great restaurant and you go there often and their wine selection is the best in town. Um, but I didn't realize that you were saving your nickels and, you know, invading sure. the couch cushions to take your wife there. Oh, and I, and I had, I had no money. So then when the gentleman came up and he was like, can I interest you in a bottle of wine? Like I'm literally looking at the list, like, okay, I have X dollars. What's the bottle I can afford and leave a tip and walk out with no money after. Yeah. 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 And I still have that bottle in our, the little riddling rack in our living room. Oh, fantastic. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a great story. Awesome. My, I'd say our other um, really, uh, there's a lot of great restaurants here in town, but um, Tabachines at Herndon and Palm. Yes. Love, love their cocktails, Samuels, their Somme, and an amazing server, Consuela is a, the owner and hostess. And the ceviche there is killer. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. We, we, whenever we go there, we, are, we always t take an Uber and we're there for probably four hours at least. Yep. It's, it's a blast. So our office used to be in that shopping center. And there was nothing, we've moved, gosh, it was 10 years ago now, but there was nothing in there. And I swear, I was just talking with an accountant about this today. When we moved out is when all the good restaurants moved in. And so we missed, it's now like <laughs> restaurant row over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we missed, it's probably better for my wallet that I'm not over there having lunch all the time, you know. Uh, well, and last one, have you guys gone down to the Modernist downtown Fresno? No, I want good. to. I yeah, have not put that on the list. We'll, we'll, we will add that to our date night list of places to go uh, when we get the babysitter. Um, nice. Well, I have something altogether different. Now, if, uh, if you are listening or watching this and you know, Joe, you know, Joe is an absolute stud in the gym. I, so this is, uh, this is something Joe, that you might be able to appreciate, but I am dabbling now. This is what's on my mind in kettlebells. Oh, that'll make a believer out of you, man. Yeah, it. I just think it's so cool. I am a soft, pudgy mess after <laughs> like going on a carb bender during COVID and not stopping. So now I'm trying to get a grip on things. Okay. And I am fascinated by the fact that this heavy ball with a handle on it can be swung a hundred different ways and make you sore where you never knew you could be sore. I think it's super cool. And so that's what's been on my mind lately is me in the garage with just a kettlebell trying to get back in shape. Good for you, dude. Good so for you. I, uh, I it's know not, it's, it's, it's not, not a cool restaurant. Favorite. It's not a vacation spot, but I think, you know, my wife is, is she's trying to do some meal. I think we have stumbled. We've kind of backed into this idea of, you know, it's, we really do have to eat a little bit better and eat out a lot less and, and, and do better and be healthier and all of that. And so my solution has been this, you know, cast iron ball in my garage, sweating yeah, it out. Did you, so. did you get like 10 different weights or you, what are you swinging around? It's just 25 pounds. Do it. Um, yeah. I got a 25 pounds and a bench and a cheap dirt, cheap $5 yoga mat. I'm trying, like, I've gone expensive and I, you know, I, I don't even mind spending money and going to a fancy gym, but I'm, I'm, I'm dabbling in the idea of like, how fit could I get if I just swing this around and do body weight exercises? And I have a hunch that I can make those things pretty difficult mm -hmm. and maybe I'll graduate up to higher weights or different workouts or double work, double, double swinging pel uh, kettlebells, but oh, um, what's up? gotta start somewhere. When you're swinging this iron around, what's on your playlist? 
Uh, it kind of depends. It kind of depends. Um, I will just throw on like a generic workout playlist. I've got some nineties heavy metal playlists that, that depending on my mood. Um, but you know, I was on the treadmill the other day and I was just watching, uh, the Tom Segura, uh, Netflix special that I actually mm -hmm. had to turn off because I was laughing out loud and other people in the gym thought I was a madman. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So. So uh, I'll get back with you uh, in a month or two from now and let you know how my kettlebell journey is going. Good. Oh, I'm proud of you, man. It, it's yeah. one day at a time. It is one day at a time. And eventually I will be throwing tires and slinging ropes and doing all the crazy stuff that you do <laughs> because you are an absolute star. Do you do the the uh, like the races, like the Spartan races and stuff like that? I've done um, two of them. Uh, in fact, um, Spartan puts on an indoor series called the DECA, D-E-K-A. So it's okay. 10 exercises. Um, and there was an event in April that I did. Um, I trained for the first time in my life for four months leading up to it. And then I finished, but I felt like I went out in spectacular fa fashion because a couple things broke along the way. So only as of two things weeks, on you broke. Mm -hmm. I had to oh, go no. see a surgeon, and it was it was crazy. Oh, um, no. But I'm, I'm I would say I'm 98 percent now, and so there's actually a team event in September that I've been training for starting two weeks ago. So okay, yeah, it'll be good. Do you find it's better to train when you're getting ready for an event, or is it better when you're just kind of working out to be healthy? Uh, I think, um, like with anything, you know, training or working out with other people, it's better to suffer together than, than to suffer alone. Sure. Right. And you can heckle each other and encourage each other. And I, I actually really enjoy that aspect. of Awesome. It. So this is going to be in September that you're going to compete September. And it'll, instead of me doing it, the whole thing by myself, like I'll have a partner and we'll have practice like leading up to it almost okay. like a relay. Oh, right on. Okay. Well, We'll get you back on this thing at the end of September and we can hear how it went for you guys. Good. Yes. Awesome. I feel like I should knock on something like no whammies, <laughs> no whammies, no whammies. Although, you know, training as hard as you do in your forties, there's always, there could be a whammy around the corner. You never know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yep. Um, well, cool. Well, Joe, thanks for joining joining always, us for the podcast. Ahead, um, this is the part where I'm obligated to say, if you haven't subscribed to this yet, it's time to subscribe, whether you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can hit the subscribe button because we do the casual Friday webcast every two weeks. And then we do the podcast weekly um, with the varying kind of formats that we've got. So um, Joe, I have no doubt we'll have you back again because you are definitely a crowd favorite. Hey, it's, it's always a highlight, man. I, I appreciate you having you in my life and, and in my orbit. Keep up the good work. All right, man. Thanks a yeah. lot. All right.